So in atoms, we introduced, and we say that uh, atoms are the smallest particles of an element that can take part in a chemical change. So that chemical change is what we explained yesterday. We said it's because of the free mobile electrons. Nailoana? Yes. So it's due to that uh, free mobile electrons, you find that there is that chemical change which is taking place. So for today, we want to see the electron arrangements in elements. Electron arrangement in elements. So for electron arrangement, um, you know that elements have the electronic configurations. What we are referring to as electronic configuration. So we say the electronic configuration is a ratio. And remember, when we were introducing on atoms, we say an atom has a nucleus, which is at the center. Then we have the energy levels. So the energy levels is where we have the electrons. Then the nucleus is where we have the protons and neutrons. So the electrons are the ones that are revolving around the energy levels. So that's why we were saying the electronic configuration or the electron arrangement uh, depends on the number of electrons. So if you have, let's say, like, uh, which example can we use of an element? Number? Element number? Just pick any randomly. Oxygen. So oxygen is number? Eight. Oxygen has eight number of electrons. So since it has eight number of electrons, remember we introduced and said, in the first energy level, it takes a maximum of two electrons. See Yes. Second energy level, maximum of? Maximum of eight electrons. Then third energy level takes a maximum of eight electrons. So, if the first energy level is already filled, then you go to the next. Like for oxygen, it is eight electrons. So therefore, for us to obtain its electronic configuration, we ratio. So you take the first energy level takes a maximum of two, then two colons, full colons. Two, this is the first energy level. How many remains from eight? Six. So the remaining six will be taken to the next energy level. So that's why the electronic configuration of oxygen is 2 to 6. Are we together? Yes. So 2 to 6 means uh, the total number of electrons that are present in oxygen are 8. Whereby the first energy level, which is this, takes a maximum of 2. The next energy level takes a maximum of 6. Are we together? That is it. So now, when you are now drawing the structures or what we call the electron arrangement in elements, how do they behave in an atom? That's what we are going to look at in a few minutes. So for oxygen, we have 2 to 8 to 6. 2 to 6, which makes a total of 8. Now, uh, when you are now going to represent this in energy levels, we use either dots or crosses. We can use eta dots or crosses. So a dot is something like this. Then a cross is something like this, an X. So we can either use a dot or we use an X. Like now, uh, if we want to represent this oxygen, two to six, first energy level takes two, second energy level takes six. So it's upon you as a learner to take either you use this or you use X. You cannot mix both of them. If you decide that you are going to use a dot, use it. If you decide to use an X, use it. So we say, you first start with the nucleus, then you come to the first energy level. Check here. It is 2 to 6. So it means we only have 2. 
the first energy level and the second energy level. So this becomes the first energy level has a maximum of two. So another student can decide and say, I use an X. So you say one, two. Are you together? So you have represented the first two electrons. Then you move to the next. The six electrons are being transferred to the next energy level. So you will take this. That is the second energy level. Then you see we have a maximum of six. So this is one, two. Remember electrons move in pairs. They move in pairs. So this is one, two, three, four. Then five, six. Are we in agreement? Very simple. So this now you have represented this electronic configuration in a diagram of an atom. So from the center here we have the nucleus, then you have the first energy level carrying a maximum of two, second energy level, second energy, it's carrying six. Remember, we still have this. So kuna space mepaki apa? Ya watu angapi? Wa wili. So which means, for this oxygen to become stable, it must gain two electrons. For it to become stable. Remember we say, second energy level takes a maximum of eight. So here we already have six. So bado in itachi ngapi? Bili. So that's why we have uh, this space remaining here. You can either decide, another person can say, let me put mine here. So which means you will not be having this. It doesn't matter where you live, you are space. So long as it's within the same same energy level. Now we understand it. Yes. Another element which you can use as an example. Which one? Potassium. Potassium is K. Its chemical symbol is K. And it comes from a Latin word, Calium. Are we understanding? So, the chemical symbol can either come from Latin words, we have the rules, it can either come from the Latin words, or you can take the first letter of an element and any letter from the second onwards, like magnesium. Magnesium is written as this. So we can have the chemical symbol of magnesium as capital M, G. So for potassium, potassium is written as this. But why are we saying its chemical symbol is K? It's because its name is derived from a Latin word, calium. So we pick the first one, which is capital K. So that's why we have uh, the chemical symbol of potassium to be K. Potassium is number? 19. 19. So it's number 19, therefore. Its electronic configuration is 2, 2, 8. eight. Two, eight, two, one. Very good. So this is two to eight, which is ten. Plus eight, ten plus eight, eighteen plus one, nineteen. Very good. So that's right. Now, check from here, from this ratio here, how many energy levels must we have? How many energy levels? They are? Four, very good. So we have the first energy level, the second energy level, the third energy level, and the fourth energy level. So that implies the first energy level is already filled with a maximum of two electrons, followed by the second, maximum of eight electrons, followed by the third one, maximum of eight, and the remaining one is being transferred to the next energy level. So how do we represent it here? We say, start with a nucleus, then you draw the first energy level, having a maximum of two. So one, two. You go to the next one, maximum of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next, maximum of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. Do we still have another one? Yes. yes, we have one remaining. 
So this is only one. That is it. So you are remaining with only one here, this one here. So that's why we are saying uh, this potassium. Thank you. So we are saying that this potassium can only become stable by losing one electron. It's very easy to lose for it to become stable. And when it loses one electron here, it forms an ion, which is potassium ion. The plus here shows that it has lost one electron. So we say this is potassium ion. And the plus is what we are referring to as the cation. Yes. So it is potassium ion for it to become stable. Same case to oxygen here. We were saying oxygen gains how many electrons? Two. This was six. So it means it still requires two for it to become two to eight. So it means the ion of oxygen is written as O2 minus. Negative. It is an anion. So anion is negative, cation is positive. So you can see potassium, when it loses an electron, it's positive. When it gains an electron, it is negative. negative. Very good. Any question up to there? No question. Have you understood? <laughs>